This is the Digital Savage Experience Podcast, hosted by Roman Prokopchuk, bringing you all things digital marketing, tech, business, and motivation. What's stopping you from becoming relentless in all aspects of life? Are you ready to become a digital savage? Let's get into today's episode. Hey everyone, this is Roman Prokopchuk, and this is the Digital Savage Experience, episode 58, Dealing with Pain and Loss. So unfortunately, in terms of frequency, I haven't been able to record any episodes in about, you know, 10 days. Last Monday, my grandfather had massive stroke and heart complications, and I rushed to his side, the hospital, and I pretty much have been sitting day in and day out in the ICU since Monday. So I'm emotionally, physically, and mentally just drained. That same weekend, I also sprained my ankle and had to rush my wife to the emergency room as well. So it was a busy weekend with a lot of kind of turmoil and tribulations. But... I just wanted to share in terms of my experience that I've dealt with because this is the first time I've had something like this with anyone close to me. Obviously, a lot of people have suffered a lot of loss and pain and disease and things of that nature and sickness, but this is the first closest person to me that has experienced something like this. So, my grandfather is 88 he's still with us god willing i don't know for how much longer but he's basically in kind of a sleep state um only opening his eyes sometimes so i also wanted to record this as documentation of what i felt at the time so in the future i can look back at it and listen to it as well as You know, my future children, my foster children, foster children that, God willing, were able to adopt. So, basically, my grandfather is 88. He was born in 1930, which is crazy, before World War II. He grew up basically a selfless dude. He had to serve in the military. In terms of the Soviet Union, he actually drove a tank back in the day. I believe it was in the 50s. And then, late 50s, he got married. And he had two daughters, one of which was my mom. And we lived in Ukraine till 1990. I was born in 84, so... I lived in Ukraine about five to six years, close to it, and came to the United States in March 1990. My whole family came together, so it was me, my brother, my grandfather, my grandmother, my aunt, my mother, and my father. He was already retired in Ukraine. Um, In terms of doing things like working at a carpentry shop and making furniture. So at that point, he was already on a retirement. But coming here, he had to also go to work and support the family, which is crazy. So he became doing roofing. And he did that for about another... 15 years which is crazy and he did a great job and it was basically a tough job being on a roof six days a week winter summer cold hot dudes that came over from eastern europe to make a little bit of money to take home would basically quit quit the job and say you know he's like you know superman doing this I can't be up there it's crazy hot or it's crazy cold so you know in part he helped raise me so 
obviously when you have a, a loss or someone gets sick or a terminal illness near you or very close to you, you're sad. But a lot of the times you're sad, but some of the people you rarely see or rarely directly influence you. My grandfather had a you know profound influence on my life. He helped raise me. We lived in the same home in Ukraine for a while as a family. When we came to America, we were all piled into a two-bedroom apartment, basically seven of us. So we were there together as well. While in America, he lived no more than a few towns over. So I was always, you know, 20, no more than 30 minutes away from them. My grandmother and, and him... And basically, you know, they they molded me. They gave me a lot of the, the character traits and my beliefs that I currently have. And he was just a role model in terms of, you know, how to be how to be a God-fearing man, how to provide, how to be there for people, how to be selfless. And, you know, seeing him like he was on Monday morning rushing to the emergency room, it hits you. I don't care who you are, when you see somebody you love in that state, you kind of break down. So I think from Monday, last Monday up until now, I've already hit all of the kind of shock states. So, you know, you know, pain, grief, regret, um, and, and everything else in between. Blaming myself, you know, why didn't I spend more time with them? Why didn't I take them to the doctor? more frequently even if he refused to go maybe this could have been prevented things like that but from where he was to where he is now I mean it's a sad state you know seeing anyone hooked up to all those machines and you know all those windpipes and air tubes and things of that nature it it hits you hard it basically you know realigns your humanity and that you're not indestructible so some of the stuff that was you know on my plate last week in terms of you know personal material goals it's on a back burner like I, I just want this dude to pull through although the doctors are giving a very grim prognosis that you know he's not gonna make it which is you know heartbreaking I just have been looking through all the pictures so you know he's lived for 88 years going on 89s and if you take it like that he lived a long life he's he's seen a lot he impacted a lot of people in a positive way and remembering all the positive instead of remembering this one moment of sadness is I think what you should focus on if you're dealing with pain or somebody close to you has gotten hurt, has fallen ill, has passed. Looking at it from a positive perspective rather than, you know, why this person, he was such a good person, he didn't deserve to go like this, so on and so forth. You know, ideally we all want our loved ones to kind of calmly and gracefully pass from, from you know, from this earth when it's their time. But unfortunately, some instances are very painful and gruesome in terms of accidents and disease that may fall upon you. So no, I don't want to keep going back to the ICU and seeing my grandfather all hooked up to all these wires and all these machines and knowing that, you know, he may or may not ever regain speech. You know, he can't breathe without you know, an air tube, and eventually that's going to have to be taken out, so his days are numbered unless it's, you know, an act of God, you know, intercedes in that, and I have been praying, I have been asking people for their prayers, but as well, being realistic, that he may not pull through, and at that point, you kind of regret a lot of things, you regret the time you didn't spend together, you, you think it's your fault, um, looking at all the pictures over the years together and what he's done and what he's provided and how he's molded me. Like at that, those moments, I get very emotional. I get very sad and emotional and don't really know, you know, what to do at that point. Kind of break down. 
I don't really break down emotionally a lot, but like, you know, he's more like a father, you know, he was there when I was little, he was there when I was growing up, he was there for all my kind of, you know, markers in life in terms of graduating school and, you know, turning certain ages and I don't know. It's, I mean, this whole week has been one long day. It's, it's taken a lot out of me and people close to me. But I think in terms of the grieving process, it has to naturally go. So obviously you start regretting and, you know, having anguish, being super emotional and at times even hysterical. But like I said, Focusing on the person's life and all they contributed to this world and to the people around them, it really kind of paints a different picture. Obviously, nobody wants to think about death or people passing, but at some point, we all will leave this earth. So addressing it as gracefully as possible and understanding that at some point, it's everyone's time. and Hopefully, everyone lives a long and prosperous and healthy life and has an impact on others which my grandfather did so hopefully this is a document and a testament of how I felt and at this point I'm still emotional but I can somewhat control it you know a week later you know he's laying in bed I'm still there every day sitting in the ICU room where he is trying my best to keep it together and then seeing where you know life takes you but you should also remember yes the the ones close to you may pass you know they may suffer disease but you're still here you should honor them in terms of your works and how you live your life and don't you know just shut down physically emotionally and mentally don't get depressed because they wouldn't want that So just keep it together, honor them, and be there for them. And if anyone's going through any kind of pain or anguish, I don't care who you are, feel free to text me, to message me, to Skype me, to write me an email, what have you. If you're going through any type of pain, I don't care who you are, I'm willing to listen and, you know, share my experiences and try to comfort you as best as possible. So until next time, guys, thank you for all the support and the prayers, and I hope everyone has a blessed day. Take care. Have you ever thought about starting your own podcast? When I was trying to get this podcast off the ground, I had a lot of questions. How do I record an episode? How do I get my show on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and all the other places people like to listen? How do I make money from my podcast? The answer to every one of these questions is really simple. Anchor. Anchor is a one-stop shop for recording, hosting, and distributing your podcast. Best of all, it's 100% free and ridiculously easy to use. And now, Anchor can match you with great sponsors too, so you can get paid to podcast. Without Anchor, I don't think I would have ever started a podcast. It's so easy to use and I record most of my episodes from my phone. So if you always wanted to start a podcast, make money doing it, go to anchor.fm slash start to join me and the diverse community of podcasters already using Anchor. That's anchor.fm slash start. I can't wait to hear your podcast. This podcast has been brought to you by Nova Zora Digital. Find out how Nova Zora Digital can help your company grow online. Learn more at NovaZoraDigital.com. Until next time, all you digital savages.